young man that came up here. We were sitting around, DJ Wonder and I were talking about, you know, really wanting to put some of the emphasis on some of the younger up-and-coming artists who don't have the the big conglomerates and platforms behind them. And if they're, seeing a, if they're doing interesting things, that's really pushing the game forward. Let's bring them on the show. Yeah. You know, they don't have to have two billion followers have the beat to come on the show. Right. They ain't got to be affiliated to the three top biggest names on the charts to come to the show. Mm -hmm. They just got to have something to offer to this community, to this culture in order to come to the show. Absolutely. This man's rise has been really interesting. Good friend of ours, Big Sean, worked exclusively with him for a while. You know, this man came in the game um, as a, a filmmaker, a videographer, if you will, of sorts. Did what he had to do to make his imprint on the game. He's on directed videos for um, Big Sean. Um, I know he's been praised by Double XL. Uh, he's done a whole lot uh, on his own, and now he's starting to rise on his own as an MC, which was his first goal, his nice. first plan. In the first place, he did what he had to do to get here. He was homeless for a little bit, right? Yeah. Dude hit rock bottom. <laughs> he's still the game. He, he hit rock bottom, man. He's still a young man. Damn. He was a homeless out. kid. <laughs> <laughs> How you bought about at 14, homie? Oh, bumming Talk as a us. teenager. He's bumming as a teenager. Yeah, what? Asking for candy instead of real food. He didn't know. Mm, he I didn't know. Bad. You know. But now he's here, man. He got a new single, Fuck Hollywood, which is out right now. Uh, he's actually signed with one of the most influential names in the entertainment field, Doug Morris. Oh, uh, wow. He's he's done made it, ladies and gentlemen. The one and only Darnell Williams. Darnell! What up, doe? What up, doe? What up, what up Darnell? Shit, man, I'm just excited to be here, man. Thank you. Absolutely, man. Uh, you're doing great work. We're going to get into it, man. But since we talked about you being homeless, um, what was the worst meal you ate <laughs> <laughs> while being man, homeless? Man, I'll be honest. So when I became homeless, I was living in South Central because I had a dope spot in North Hollywood, mm -hmm. but the, the shit fucked up and my money fell apart. And yeah, <laughs> my locks on my apartment got changed with all my shit in it. So I was in South Central. Damn. Yeah, so I was like, I was like lit. I came to LA like, hell yeah, nigga, I didn't made it. I'm out the hood, da da da. Mm -hmm. Couple months later, shit fell apart and I'm in another hood. But it's like way worse because it's like I ain't got no family, no homies. Right. Yeah. You got crip niggas running around. Where you from and shit like oh that. Oh my like, god! Yeah, I'm like, man, I'm like, yo. I tell them, they used to tell people like, yo, I'm from the D. I, I, I'm from the D or Detroit. But the thing about Detroit is, with the accent here, like Detroit, they like Detroit. Oh, the tray, because oh, I don't know who the fuck the tray is, but <laughs> <laughs> the Crips over in the 40s is not fucking with y'all. <laughs> oh, Wait, but, hold up, let's stop laughing at that. Stop laughing. <laughs> okay, but, but anyway. Yeah, Man, yeah. I don't, probably the worst meal, bro. It probably was um damn Burger King, bro, because it was a Burger King literally on the corner. <laughs> and like, literally, they gave, I got it. I had an EBT card for a minute. Oh, wow. And you could buy a Burger King, could even buy Burger King, Popeyes, or you can get a uh, hot fish. At like one of the little fish joints uh -huh. or whatever. Uh -huh. But yeah, me and my niggas should be eating Burger King every day, bro, to the point where I could smell that shit. I could taste that shit walking <laughs> up to the Burger King. <laughs> so, That's like. Not yeah. funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but dead That's ass, bro. That's how they feel about noodles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't eat noodles. Yeah. 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 That shit just burnt me out, bro. Like, yeah, bro. It's like, uh. Were you scared, though? Like, you in South Central. It's okay. Like, damn, what's gonna happen? I'm eating Burger King. I'm getting approached by Crips. <laughs> You know, what? Were, were you at all scared or was it exciting at that time for you? Uh, I wasn't scared. I definitely wasn't excited. I was just like, damn, I didn't fucked up. Like, how did I leave one hood? And I thought, like, I literally had it. I had a pool on my roof, man, uh, to damn. sleep in. Like, my homie had this uh, kitchen, this empty kitchen room. He let me crash in. And uh, to sleep in, like, on the kitchen floor, like, with towels and shit. So I went, it wasn't scared and I wasn't, like, excited or, or, or none of that shit. Because I'm from Detroit and... um. Shit, shit's crazy out there like my whole life so I know how to move in any hood I go to mm -hmm. but it was just like getting understanding the hood understanding the whole mentality I even had to understand the gang mentality mm -hmm. understand shit that you see on the wall you see an X O, oh, they scratch this shit out oh it's some shit going on right here it's some territory beef right here yeah. so it was like living out there for like two and a half years it was a lot that I learned mm -hmm. um so it, it wasn't a, a scary thing like I'm, I'm actually happy that I went through it like you know what I'm saying I feel like being through that shit like I it it let me connect with way more people mm -hmm. because I was, I didn't grow up like rich, but I didn't grow up like the worst. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I always knew how to hustle and get shit for what I needed. But at South Central, 
that was literally like the poorest I ever been in my life <laughs> with nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because like in Detroit, you like I know, like oh yeah, you think you know, I, and I grew up poor, I grew up hard, but it, it's something different. Yeah. When you don't got a homie to look to the left, uh-huh. or you can't call auntie and she fix you a plate or some shit like yeah. that. Like you just literally, I was just out there like I'm gonna make a plan. Wow, Darnell Williams, man. <laughs> Give us a little perspective, though, Darnell, on how you went from Detroit to being able to exactly. even afford a place in LA with a pool on the roof, like. Right. And then what the hell did you do with the money in two months? Come on, bro. Yeah. So um. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> what happened was she tapped in. Nah, so so really, man, I was moving like a uh, mad mad weight, hella cocaine. Mm. Wait, wait, nah, wait, 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 wait. I'm fucking with y'all. I'm fucking with y'all. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm I fucking with y'all. Like, yo, you think I'm really but like, just straight up incriminating myself out here? <laughs> like, the dumbest motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Yo, like, no yo, wonder. like, this nigga's real smart. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, damn, nah. No wonder he's homeless. Nah, um, <laughs> what happened was, man, I was shooting. I used to do, like, I was doing videos and shit. Uh, he shot for two. Um, Big Sean, was, Big that Sean. Your, was that your first big break when you did Too Fake? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, that was my, I don't, like, I don't even know. Shout out to Sean for like being comfortable with just letting a nigga like work on some shit like that. But yeah, that was my first time. It was just like I constantly was hitting this nigga. I was in school for film. My homie Mike Carson was in school for film. My homie Mike Wax, he had this dope blog we was working, um, Ill Roots. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so Sean was like, yeah, let's do it. We, and that was when the 5Ds first came out. So it was like okay. nobody was really getting them cheap videos. And we yeah. was like, yo, we can get this video for you, da da da. We got a camera and all this shit. And they looked banging too at yeah. that time. So yeah. They, yeah, that shit was super bit, crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we had um, Chitty Bang and da da da. They came and did it. From there, um, a couple months down, Mike Carson was my roommate. Mm-hmm. And um, over the summer, we stayed wow. a, right above. From uh, fucking... give, give, but give context on who Mike Carson is. Okay, yeah, if, yeah. Mike Carson is my nigga. All right, that's my brother. Okay, but beyond that, like, uh, <laughs> he's just an OD creative. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, super talented. Uh, mm-hmm. he do he used to do videos for Big Sean too. But now he doing like all of the stage shit for like Drake. Mm-hmm. He do that stage shit for Travis. So if you see the lights, that's yeah. that's the his set shit. Design. Yeah, set design. And um, that used to be your roommate. Yeah. And the talk Ill Roots was a collective of creatives, uh, right? Yeah, it was really just me. Uh, Mike Wax and Mike Carson. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we got to college, Wax had it as a blog, and then me and Carson was doing visuals because we was both in the like visual programs or whatever. Mm-hmm. So then after that first video, once that shit came out, it got like a million views. We started getting calls from everybody, and then just start hitting people up like Chip, da da da. But like I was saying, um, over the summer, one summer we was living um, in this, this apartment in uh, Wicker Park, and it was like right a, right above from um, the RSVP gallery. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you know, like Dime C and Virgil yeah, mm-hmm. on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like we got real close with them and shit. And this was during the time when Watch the Throne and all that shit, right before Watch the Throne mm-hmm. um, and Dark Twisted Fantasy. And uh, one day, man, I was at the crib and Carson knocked on my door late as hell. Like, yeah, man, I'm about to go to New York. Uh, Virgil, Virgil called me to come shoot for Kanye. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, like, so when you gonna be back? He was like, I don't know. <laughs> So I was like, shit, well, uh, take my T2I, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> take this camera, because shit, I'm not about to be shooting shit here. I know, like, you probably gonna need two cameras to set it up. So he take it. Um, Wax was already out here in Connecticut. Uh, so they started shooting for Kanye and shit. I was back home in Chicago just like, fuck. I ended up having to drop out of college because I mm-hmm. ran out of bread. Mm. So I started delivering pieces on the west side and shit. <laughs> and, um, yeah, Damn, man, man. shit is a journey, bro. Yeah. But, yeah, so I'm delivering pieces and shit, and, um... Eventually, the day came. I don't know. It's almost like a year, bro. Uh, the day came, and they hit me like, "Yo, you ready to move to New York?" and shit. Wow. So it was like, "Yeah," because I they we was already like trying to do the ill roots videos for everybody, yeah. but then Kanye swooped them off for a second. Mm-hmm. But once that shit cooled down, it's like, "All right, we could do this New York shit." Came to New York, start doing a little shit for good. Um, but then we realized like, "Yo, we can't shoot videos out here because all the artists so in and out." Yeah. So it was kind of like we might as well just move to where the artists. Are going yeah so by this time we was already we was getting like sponsors and shit for the blog so we could pay for it we had an apartment paid for mm-hmm. um moved to la and yeah that's that's the short story of how i got oh, to hell. la yeah mm-hmm. damn now how the shit fell apart yeah that part <laughs> <laughs> that part <laughs> we're we gonna, we gonna come back and talk about how the shit put, fell apart let's play that uh play that porno joint all yeah. right all right okay let's do it man darnell williams is here you want to talk with him 888 888- Seven four two three three four five. How it all like fell apart. <laughs> yeah, they're porno right there. Darnell Williams, man, get to know this young man. He's on the rise. He uh, you can follow him on social media at Darnell. Go ahead, go ahead. Darnell Williams. There Real it is. Name. 
Okay, so we that song is called Porno. Real quick, what's the context behind um, Porno? Uh, Porno really came about when I was just making a bunch of songs and shit about like life, and um, it started getting to the point where it's like, damn, bro, I don't even really want to relive all this shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't really want to even be in this state of mind. But for the the for the price of entertainment, you know, my the fans and shit, they want to hear the music. So like, it kind of came out as like artists like uh self-sacrificing themselves for the art like yeah. just like porn like the people who watch it they get entertained by it but they're not necessarily going through it you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying but those mm-hmm. girls are actually really fucking them dudes and mm-hmm. vice versa and mm-hmm. doing all that wild shit for your entertainment and it's the same with like making music and art is like especially when it's real and it's close to you it's like i'm putting myself out there for you yeah all kind of shit shit that i wouldn't really even say just in a normal conversation with my friends I put on tracks and shit, but it's, I don't know, you might not necessarily feel it, but you entertained by it. Mm-hmm. You might be entertained by it because your life may not have had as much trauma. But for me, it's something real. It's like therapeutic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But overall, it's just porn. We're all porn stars. He's, exactly. Mm-hmm. I get that concept. I'm a porn got... star, Heather. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, Heather. I got mad views. Okay, so. I'm out there. Okay, so <laughs> this part, this is part two. Okay. Of how Darnell Williams came to be. Shit. All right. <laughs> I'm here for Quick it. Quick recap: Big Sean gave him his first big break. Yes. As a videographer, um, him and his collective, the Ill Roots. It was called Ill Roots. Yeah, Ill Roots. It's still online right now. It's still, it's still online. Rocking. You know, um, uh, they start getting some some traction off of it, right? Yeah. You know, you guys end up going to school too, right? Yeah. We. I went to school for like a year and a half. A year and yeah. a half. Um. Uh, one of the partners started working with Ye a year yeah. later. You know, he came to New York. It was hard to find artists, so they decided to move to L.A. Mm-hmm. They were living in a plush-ass pad. Plush. They were getting money from the blog. You know, oh. they got Pools on the roof, sweat. Everybody Ooh, winning. Bitches. And then all of a sudden... Man, I don't know if anybody ever seen that Facebook movie. When, yeah. um... <laughs> all right, yeah, when dude come to the crib and then, like, uh... uh he kind of cut, uh... Justin Timberlake out or whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm going to just say it in short. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, don't say in short. You own it something. What happened? Long. Like, really, like, it was just a situation of, like, not having the paperwork together. And then when the money come into the picture, mm-hmm. everybody is a little, is different. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we were we were just kids when we started the shit. And it was, like, fun for us, you know, just smoking blunts in the room, coming up with dope-ass ideas and shit. And then all these sponsors and shit came in. And then people to like talk to the sponsors for as management all these crazy motherfuckers came in mm-hmm. and kind of ripped apart something that three kids created like once mm-hmm. the money came and all of the big heads came in mm-hmm. it just got to be too much for like egos flared up and shit not even not on my end but um yeah of course not yeah right. <laughs> and i ain't, and i ain't knocking nobody either because like everybody we all cool and we all got like good lives and shit right now but um yeah it just came to a point where like business Egos clashed, uh-huh. and you know, business and friendship is one of the most dangerous games. Ain't it? So, like, yeah, so that shit, like, one day, I, like I said, I came, some discrepancies in the in the business, uh-huh. got into an argument. I was in Detroit at the time. I came back, flew flew right back the next day, right after that shit, like, nah, fuck this. We about to solve this shit right now. Mm. Got to my house, my locks was changed. Wow. wow. And Corey, my manager right there, he drove me from the airport to my crib. So he was there this whole time, like, seeing me, like, beating on the door, like, what the fuck, man? I'm open, I'm going to fucking kill you. Like, I was living. I ain't uh-huh. never been ready to kill a nigga in my life. Uh-huh. But, like, yeah, at that moment, it's like, bro, like, I literally know what the fuck to do. And from there, it was, like, couch to couch. Then I ended, eventually ended up in my homie crib in South Central. Uh-huh. And that shit, I literally just got a crib, like, uh... It was like maybe like three years of that shit after that. Like from that day wow. to just like from like you coming in, you know, you in this state of mind to just flip. Like you don't got shit. You don't even got shit to do. Yeah. Like I didn't even have shit. Yeah. Like I didn't even have <laughs> shit to do no more, let alone yeah. like I didn't have possessions. Wow. And then I I remember watching like followers drop numbers and uh-huh. like people. You just start seeing all of the real from the fake. Shit wow. just really hit me quick as hell. How did that fuck with you mentally, like psychologically? Bruh, honestly, bro, I was really fucked up for a minute. Like, I remember waking up in the middle of the night, like, fuck, like, yeah. fucking kill this nigga. Like, man, I, I was dead ass on, like, a fucking kitchen floor, bro, with, and I and, and and we had fucking bed bugs, bro. 
I didn't even have a bed, oh and I had God. fucking bed bugs. I don't even know how that shit happened, yo. But yeah, so I'm laying on the floor, getting bit the fuck up. It's Wait, so crazy. Bugs. <laughs> bed this was, bugs live on the kitchen floor, not the bed. You know, cause man, all right. So that that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, how the fuck you even? You only got a home to even come fuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> the bed bug? Yeah, but um, homeless bugs. Yeah, yo, exactly. I got so homeless. I got the motherfucking homeless bugs start kicking it with me and shit, yo. But um, no, dead ass, cause like, if people don't know about bed bugs, they they sleep in like wood and furniture yeah, yeah, and shit too. Yeah. So even if it's walls, they can be inside the walls yeah. and shit like that. But they can like, infested inside a home. Yeah, it was like yeah. So I man, it really fucked me up at a point, and then. Damn, I'm a key. I'm hate to keep telling y'all like the levels of the shit, but bro, I levels. promise you. So one morning, um, we was about to leave out or whatever, and um, uh, I just went to the store. I grabbed some weed or whatever. My homie, he had this car. He was getting in the shower. I had all of my clothes in like a suitcase. The clothes that I had left, I had a suitcase, and I put them in the trunk of his car. This was earlier in in the homeless situation, and I was thinking like, you know, I ain't gonna be here that long, so right. I'm not about to even unpack my shit in this kitchen that I'm standing in. Um, so he went to the shower or whatever. He got in the shower. I come outside to go get some blunts or whatever. Um, and I'm like, yo, where you put the car? Where you parked the car? And he's like, uh, what you mean? It's in the driveway. I'm like, nigga, no, it's not. He like, bro, stop playing. I'm like, nigga, the car is not there. He come outside. He's like, fuck, man, they towed the car. <laughs> so they towed the car with all of my shit in it, all of my clothes in it. I swear to God. So I was on tip, bro. At this point, I literally had nothing. But... Honestly, I could say that going to nothing, literally one of the best things that ever happened to me. Because mm -hmm. I could go. honestly see, I could realize and appreciate shit way more instantly. Like, everything is way more gratifying now. Okay. This is why I love his story. Mm -hmm. All right, because he's here today. The, the act of hitting rock bottom, you're lucky. Your blessed has happened to you. Yes. At this time of your career, because yeah. it's still early. Yeah. So the lessons you learn now are going to benefit you in such a big way moving forward because you appreciate what you have so much more, right? Facts. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, man, Darnell Williams is here. Like, let's talk to this fucking story right here. <laughs> Yo, he, and he didn't even mention the fact that it was zero shorties around because ain't nobody smashing on the kitchen floor with mm, bed Man, oh. Yo, not at all. I wouldn't even bring shorties <laughs> over. Like, I was, man, I, I used to talk to girls and, like, um, like man what you say to him dude like you want to come that's the to my thing house? you just yeah. really didn't have shit to say or you didn't have shit to do or you would get to the point with talking to a girl and to the point where she's like oh you want to go out for da 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 and you like oh no <laughs> like you know i'm trying to i remember like honestly like always thinking just having a motherfucking excuse on hand mm -hmm. so i wouldn't have to like you know really let them know what the fuck i was going through mm -hmm. yeah but um so yeah. let me ask you this, um, and then I'll let you drive in. Um, you said something really interesting to me because you were broke, you were sleeping on the floor, your clothes were in the trunk, but you said I was going to the store to get some I was weed. That. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you broke, you sleeping on the. How could you afford weed? Like, Bro, was that <laughs> that's the thing. People always ask that. Like, yo, that's the thing. Honestly, that's one. That's one of the things I say. Like, that was the goal for for the day. Like, okay. literally, <laughs> like, we needed to get some food, and we needed to get some weed, and it'd be all right. But, yeah, if weed was like, you know, L.A., weed is mad cheap. So you yeah. can get, like, some shitty weed, $5, $10. The shitty Reggie. weed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Niggas is definitely, I mean, it's not as Reggie as the Detroit Reggie that I grew up yeah. on. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. Like, literally, just me and my homies. I had, you remember the, the fucking, uh, this was the Western Union. This was, like, before the cash app. Uh -huh. I used to be hitting up the Western Union every once in a while. Like, a homegirl would send me a dub or something like that. So, and then my homie, the same thing with him. And then, um, but, yeah, like, we always had a little money to get weed or whatever. Like, if we had the cash bottles, mm -hmm. what I mean, you know, do a little recycling thing or whatever. Y'all did the recycling homie, thing? Yeah, my homie did fucking um, plasma. Uh -huh. He used to go give his plasma, and they'd give him the quick 40 ball. Wow. And come back, we might grab a Domino's pizza and some weed and shit. But it was literally like, yeah, <laughs> that's man. Real. That's Walking blood money for we real right there. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you got to get your carbs up. Hell. <laughs> you <laughs> hell eat eating a slice. <laughs> weed and pizza can make everything feel okay. But, yeah, it was really just the, the thing about, like, having to get some food and then just getting some weed to just keep my mind right. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. But once I got, once we got on a schedule of just having that, 
I just focused everything out. I used to just be in Hollywood, just walking around, waiting for, not waiting for opportunity, but kind of just hoping that I would run into something. Mm -hmm. And I did occasionally, like I pop up in the studio once in a while to meet people and network and shit. But um, yeah, man. Doug Morris is easily one of the, if not the biggest uh, entertainment agency there is, right? Is it? It's pretty. William Morris. What, I mean, William Morris. About? Oh, I'm oh, I'm thinking William Doug Morris. Doug Morris is a uh, music executive. Oh, I Doug him Morris. From, um, I thought I remembered him from EMI and M MCA and the labels that I was signed to in the '90s. Universal, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And how did you meet Doug Morris? Ah, uh, man, it was just fam. Like the studio I was recording at. Yeah. The people that own that studio were like a family, like a friend of his from mm -hmm. like they done hella work together and shit like that. And um, one day I was in the studio. Uh, I just came in and just holla at them one time. And um, uh, Steve Bartles was there, and mm -hmm. he works with Doug. Um, and I don't know, like, we ain't even talked that long. It was mad brief, but I think he took a liking to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess he was like, yo, let me check this shit out, da da da, da. And um, yeah, from there, like, kind of started a relationship. Corey. Can I talk about that? The manager, Corey. The Reed story? Which story? The Reed. Reed. L.A. Reed? Oh. Can you tell the Reed story? What's Reed? I don't see why not. Yeah. You can tell the L.A. Reed story. The uh, L.A. Reed story? Yeah, okay. so, I mean, in short, what exactly happened was uh, L.A. Reed randomly came to meet me at the studio one day. So that shit was crazy, and it's like, I was sitting with him, and we talked, you know what I'm saying? Like, got it in, good conversation. He was going crazy to the music and shit. Like, Darnell, who names them somebody? Darn, <laughs> that name they self Darnell. That's dope as fuck. Like, you know, he was geek. So um, he was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do a deal, whatever. Like, I'm ready, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, hell yeah. You know, I walked out of that meeting like, fuck, like ecstatic. Um, but before that happened, like, uh, Steve was already trying to, you know, mm -hmm. do some shit. Hustle but they didn't, yeah, yeah, they didn't get 12 tone ready yet. So before that happened, just off the strength of just the relationship, we hit Steve like, yo, da-da-da-da, L.A. Reed just popped in here. And Steve was like, yo, fuck that. You know, let's do some shit. We about to kill it. And... That's Kinda how the deal rocking since then. There. there it is, Darnell Williams, man. Darnell, real quick, I'm, um, what was your spirituality like during that time? Are you a person of faith? Did you pray a lot? I know sometimes people don't talk about that, yeah. but how was your spirits like, just in terms of God and faith during that time? Um, I actually got closer to mm. God, and or I like, uh, I'm more so like, uh, I just believe in a higher power, mm -hmm. and um, so. I, like, I really believe all of the religions and shit is, like, somehow it's the same or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I pray every night, but it's not, like, the deepest is, like, you know, pray my Lord, so yeah, to yeah, keep yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. I pray in the morning. Um, I definitely believe in God and, like, good karma and, like, you know, the energy that you put out there is going to come back yeah. to you. But uh, I never really lost the faith. I always felt like, you know, I was going to make it. I just didn't know the time. It's like, Lord, how long, how many tests, how many more tests are you going to put me through? Mm. Like, what else can go wrong? You know what I'm saying? But I never really, um, I never really lost the faith. I mean, it got to the point sometimes, like, I it would get really bad. And I would run to this, uh, it was like this prayer house where you can go in there and mm. just pray without, uh, what the fuck, uh, denomination the, or, you know, what's oh. the, what's the pastors and all that shit. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't really fuck with all that shit. <laughs> yeah. Like the Lord's no, middleman and shit. No, it's okay. So, in, well, at least in the Catholic church way, they have confessional booths. Oh, so confessional you go booth. in okay. and you talk yeah. that way, yeah. but it's, it's like you kind of confessing your sins and your prayers to somebody else, but you're saying this was removed from it. Nah. Yeah. So like, yeah, it wasn't nobody there. It was just yeah. me. You just go in there and you could just pray. And, um, I remember one, at one point it got so bad. I just literally like, yo. I, I literally came in there like, yo, God. Well, I, didn't, I wasn't like, yo, God. But I was just like, man, like, please just help me out. Like, just help me, man, because I'm real fucked up right now. And I promise you that if you, like, take me to the top of the heights, I promise you that I'm going to make sure that I don't spread no bullshit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that by the end it'll be, I don't know, even if it's two two kids, five kids. might not be the whole world, but by the end I'm going to do something that's going to make everything better for a large amount of people. So, honestly, after I made that promise, I can't even lie. Like, niggas might be like, oh, this nigga wild, wow, whatever. But shit just slowly started cranking. Wow. And there you are. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And we're going to make sure you don't mess up that promise, promise. you made. Nah, right? nah, okay? definitely, man. Because that's what happened. People get it. They forget about what their intentions were. Nah, right. I mean, the thing yeah. is, i always been me and, like, God know, know, know me personally, like, know my heart. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a nigga, I would definitely be in the strip club, wilding out and all that shit. But at the same time, like, you know what I'm saying, I could see the person in the stripper. 
And at the same time, like, I want to donate to kids and shit. Like, I want to donate. I want to go to the club and pay a girl tuition. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I want to pay somebody who don't strip tuition. But I don't see the bad at either. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. So I'm I'm not no motherfucker like super uh, uptight. Got it. All yeah. that shit. But yeah, like, yeah, God much. God know exactly. Like I could be around here like fuck this and fuck that all day. But you know, at the end of the day, like what I'm trying to do. Yeah. 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 Darnell Williams, give him a round of applause. Who's Plains Crew? Who's that? Oh man, you know man. It's the Rock, man. There it is. The Rock, man. <laughs> Shout out Rock Nation, man. <laughs> Are you with Rock Nation too? Yeah, man. Okay, uh, talk uh, about like, that. Yeah, know about that. Yeah, how'd that happen? Man, dog. Sh- that's that a crazy prayer. story. Wow, they, yeah, God bless. for real, man. Rock Nation. Uh, they flew me out like mad early. They was trying to do like a, a deal, like a record deal. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it just wasn't the time yet with uh like the stuff that I had out at the time, man. But they was just like, yo, this this shit is super dope because they seen the fuck Hollywood video mm-hmm. like a while ago. And um, I remember Tata had me in the office, and I met him. Wow, you know, Tata, good, yo, man. I heard about Tata my whole life, so it was just, <laughs> it was like, yo. So I came in there, he was like, yo, yo, what's up? Yo, 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 you hungry? You hungry? And I'm like, nah, I'm straight, man, because I'm in Rock Nation. I'm trying to be cool. Right. Like, yo, you hungry, man? Yo, get this nigga some wings, man. Get this nigga some wings. <laughs> get him some Burger King. <laughs> Let's get him some Burger King. So after that, literally after Tata, I was like, yo, get this nigga some wings. I already kind of felt that home. like cause <laughs> That's all it In LA, yeah, people don't be like, niggas don't be talking to you like that. You right. know what I'm saying? Everybody's so like cordial, but they they really were just on some homebody vibes. Like, yo, we fuck with your shit, yo. Mm-hmm. It's super innovative. It's super creative. Like, we would love to have you here, shit like that. So like. LA is way more, I don't know. I don't know. It, but out there was just like a homie like really praising the shit. And um I Ooh. just fuck with the vibe. Mm-hmm. I also fuck with like the staff up there, like the culture, like how many black brothers it is up there doing their thing. Mm-hmm. And then another thing I like is the the brothers up there working look like older versions of niggas that I grew up with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? That's how I want to see my homies and shit, like off the block mm-hmm. into the office and shit like that. Yeah. But um yeah. They, they are older versions of it. You know, oh, okay. we're, we're all just older versions of you. Yeah. <laughs> but you happen to bump into <laughs> one of the most solid dudes in the game because you don't see him out there like that. He's been solid for a long time with Tata, so that's why it's easy for you to feel relatable to him because you a solid dude. Yeah. I want to do something different, man. I want to play the song Fuck Hollywood. And then um, I arranged for something really special because Darnell is going to spit bars and you know, lately people been coming at us about who we allow to spit bars, and I'm like, how you gonna question who we are? Mm-hmm. You know, we've been doing this shit before y'all been alive, you know, mm-hmm. and this is Shade 4 or 5. We got the most iconic DJs and ears in the game here. So I invited my brother to come listen to you spit, the legendary drama king himself, oh. DJ K Slayers here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Drama king is in the building. Oh. Come back with that one right there. K Slayers in the building. Yep. Sway in the morning, Shade 4 5. Now, by the artist Darnell Williams, man. Uh, what's next, man? You got the album coming or? Uh, yeah, I've been working on the album, but um, I'm about to just keep dropping more visuals. Uh, mm-hmm. Fuck Hollywood. We've been packaging that up to become a show. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote the pilot script for that shit. Oh, wow. So, yeah, Lit. congratulations. Gonna be dope. On show where? Just uh, uh no, nah, we man, we going for networks with this shit. Like okay. um, like like I said, like it's all like I'm all 100 percent rap. So it's kind of like it's not it's not first priority, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like a thing that is gonna grow over time. I don't know if you've seen like the clips I've been putting out. Absolutely. But like yeah, so towards the end of everything, once I'm a little bigger and shit like that, I feel like it'll be like a bigger whole like universe people to get the bigger picture mm-hmm. and then we just gonna drop that shit as a show but wow. um beyond that man I, i've been recording dope ass shit i got a song i did with a uh, rhapsody mm-hmm. two nights ago we did some fire shit um she's dope yeah oh, dope we as fuck know that. She's dope. she was trying to she was trying to go crazy on me man like, <laughs> she was trying, trying to run a little circles yeah, around yeah, me trying. she's gonna shred you up yeah, she, <laughs> she don't play that no 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 i held my own though so, shout out to my sister rhapsody is though. that important to you though to hold your own as a lyricist yeah man because i think like um me being a director every time somebody hear that shit like they think like ah it's like nah my nigga i Fry you, nigga. I'll yeah. fuck you up. <laughs> yep. okay. Like, but it's like beyond that though. I'm from Detroit, and you know, like Detroit is just a, a lyrical ass city. Even like the rappers, the trap rappers and mm-hmm. shit like that, they mad clever and shit. So like in Detroit, like you gotta be at least a B plus of a rapper to even to get, get props. Yeah, at to all, get right? any kind of props. Yeah. Um. um yeah. Dan- How old are you, Darnell? Twenty seven. Okay. Damn, you look mad. Like, you look look yeah. seventeen. Got that ASAP Rocky thing going too, right? <laughs> yeah. I know you getting his crumbs. Oh, man. 
Rocky. Don't know going for his cake. I know you man. did it, baby. They I'm really, happy for you, Rocky, Rocky, Rocky crumbs are dope, yeah. man. Take them crumbs. Man, you don't yo. get that. You don't get that. <laughs> now I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say I get his crumbs. I ain't, I am gonna say like, yo, it's just. It's a it's a thing, man. I feel like I don't know. Shout out to Rocky though, but like, uh, <laughs> nah, Rocky cool. I didn't met him like once or twice. He was a chill, cool ass dude. Like. Okay, cool. But um, it's a thing where like you know, girls who like me more than likely like that nigga too. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's like yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying? That shit must be annoying. <laughs> I mean, it's annoying to a point, but it's like at the end of the day, you know, he is own man, and I'm my own man, and yeah. it's, it's gonna. It's, it's always somebody who's similar to you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's, that's true. Dan, what's up? Dan in Arizona. Good morning. How you Dan, doing, Dan? what's good? Hey, Dan. Oh, it's Ben, but what's going on, guys? What's going on? What up, man? Say what up to Darnell Williams. We got K. Slay in here, too. Stop acting. Come on. Hey, <laughs> shout out to all you guys. HB, K. What Slay, up? First time calling in or getting through. But uh, what's up, Darnell? What hey, up, man, though? I just wanted to say uh, your story did real similar, man, to me growing up. And, like, a lot of people, like, I feel like, they don't understand, like, when you when you hit rock bottom not once but twice, you know. Like, shoot, I've been walking through the snow just, like, stay warm at night, you know, just to make it through at night. But now, dude, I'm 27 years old, and I'm driving up to my car wash that I own right now, you know? You fucking lit. So, okay. like, All right, so you got a question, though, Dan? <laughs> what I'm saying is, my question is, is, like, how do I, like, keep elevating myself, man? I want to be in your shoes. Oh, um, man, honestly, bro, the only thing I could tell you is, bro, whenever it feel like, you know, like you tired of the shit, just keep going, to be honest, like, and watch how you treat motherfuckers, bro, because mm. I, I can't tell you how many motherfuckers I done ran to mm. years from now, and um, luckily, I was a cool motherfucker to them, because you don't know, <laughs> like, the, people don't even know this, this is something I'll tell you, Chance the Rapper gave me his 10-day demo, uh, I like I ran into him at a Panera Bread mm-hmm. way back and before before he popped up, like and um uh, I heard it. You know a lot of people always it was they was trying to give us tapes and shit and I heard it and I, usually we would be like whatever but I actually fucked with it and I yeah. took it back like yo check this shit out da 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 slowly but surely Ill Roos dropped the ten day tape. Mm-hmm. Wow. Fast forward now, Chance is one of the biggest artists in the world. You know what uh-huh, I'm saying? Uh-huh. And he didn't look out for me like uh when I posted the porno video he tweeted that shit out. Yeah. And then that shit got me an influx of all type of people was hitting me up and shit like that. So it's like, really watch the how you treat people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Ooh. I mean, it's certain times where you can't help but, you know, to, to you know, re- bring the disrespect when somebody bring it to you. But, you know, if you can, you know, just, just be remain humble no matter what, even when you get to where you need to go. That's Darnell Williams on speaking, man. Dan, you a citizen. Slay in the morning, homie. Hey, good, give him a round of applause for that great story he just told. Yeah, His life journey. Shout out Dan. Young man, got a lot going Dan. on. Signed the Rock Nation. He did that on his own, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Signed the 12-tone. Give him a round of applause. He did that on his own, man. <laughs> Big Sean helped put him on. Put him a round of applause, Joey yeah. Badass. And that's Big Sean really, like, yeah. he paid it forward. Yeah. Because... El- Big Sean, you know, he had to chase Kanye. Yeah, he after did that. Yeah, he was nah. doing an interview. So man, I'm glad rem- that he listened to you and gave you that chance. Big Sean, man. Big Sean had a... That's another thing. Like, seeing how he had to grind even when he was on. Yeah. And knowing, like, when I was going through my shit, I was like, you know, this is just the beginning of the shit. So I was kind of already... I already had a look into it. But yeah, man, he's a good dude that definitely... He didn't go through the exact same thing, but... The beginning of his career, he definitely had to put his own two feet down. It wasn't just like the label saw me and I popped off and shit. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. All this sound really good, Darnell Williams, but in case you forgot because you got real comfortable, uh-oh. I understand how that happens. That happens a lot on our yeah. show, man. And that's how we want you to do it, man. But you have entered the valley of the high end. I got K Slay right here. There's no better ear in the rap game than K Slay. He'll let you know what you sound like right here. So will the citizens. Darnell Williams. Sway yeah. the morning. Shade uh, 405. Yeah. Drop a beat. Uh, Come yeah. on. Come on. Calling praise in the scooter. I'm an instant mind. So either way it go, they getting left behind. I do a show, make a lot for a little time. You got a problem, take a number, nigga, get in line. Heard niggas saying I ain't really from the city. See me out in public, wonder why they acting friendly. Same ones telling hoes they ain't fucking with me. I would never understand it, man, that shit is silly Like, what up, though? Shut up, ho Detroit player, but I'm cut, though 
One car, 30 hoodies at your front door And I shop at Zara, but you niggas don't want no smoke Skinny jean rockin', bad bitch fuckin' Bad shit talkin', Mr. Do This Shit often Better show respect when you see a boss walkin' Buy him all the click, put them all in the car Ah, <laughs> Check, check, like check K Slay Think of that kid right there, man. Be honest with him, though. Honest? Be honest with him. Honest. He held his own. Only line I didn't like was the skinny jean line. But I'm an old head, dude. <laughs> I'm, old, I'm an old head. So don't pay me no mind. Nah. I'm just an old head. But nah, nah he, he, got he, he got off. He got off. He got off? He got off. Okay, he got man. Off. You he got that thing. from K Slave, baby. Yeah, it's man. official. Did it thing. Facts, man. man. Darnell Williams, you got a big future ahead of you. Yeah, he do. Keep this demeanor, man, yeah. about you. We're going to all learn from you. We're learning from you right now, yeah. man. We appreciate man, you. I appreciate you, bro. And I'll yeah. definitely be back. I mean, I'm sure, bro. Oh, yeah. You're going to be a time we come back and we look at this shit like, yo, remember? We're going to laugh at this. Yo. <laughs> all right? Facts, man. Awesome story. Awesome journey. And so much more yeah. to do for you, man. Come back. Thank all right? You, when bro. that album gets finished, come see us. Thank you. Do a performance for us. Thank you. All right? Yeah, yeah. One more time. Let me, before I get out of here, yo, I want to give a shout out to the whole West 7 Mile. And the whole Detroit. Shout out for it to one eye. There it is, man. Darnell Williams. K Slay is here. Hip hop front line. That's out right Woo! now. If you got that project, you want to talk to K Slay, 888 742 3345.